Mm. Fat Cat wants to ask, what's your thoughts on Fury Glovegate as well as Paulie's comment? Uh, Fury Glovegate, listen, I don't know enough about it. I've seen different things. I don't know enough about it. Being a new, an outsider looking in, I, I see both sides of the argument, but mm -hmm. I haven't, he hasn't been proven guilty of anything. Not to say that anything couldn't have happened or whatever, but listen, if, if you know, he hadn't been busted yet, whatever, a third fight's going to happen. So with that being said, all parties are now even that on that much more alert is what I'll say. So what, however side you look at it, I'm, I mean, it sounds terrible, but like I'm in the middle, I'm a moderate. I could see one so I could see both sides of the argument. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen enough either way to let me lead. He's totally innocent. He's totally guilty. I'm mm -hmm. in the middle. Third fight signed, sealed and delivered from what it sounds like. Uh -huh. Let's have them figure it out in that ring underneath the lights where they're supposed to figure out things. Yeah. Because listen, Deontay Wilder's got that right hand. And if whatever happened, happened, Deontay Wilder can make him pay severely mm. on December 19th if that fight transpires then. You, you're absolutely right. And did, did you catch Paulie's comments? What was Paulie's comments again? What did he say? Paulie said, uh, oh, racism doesn't exist in 2020. Uh, I It certainly does. Uh, so <laughs> I, I completely disagree with with Paulie's comments, I I know Paulie. I, I like him. I mean, him and I have we've worked together, but it absolutely still exists in 2020, and it's it's upsetting, and it it pisses me off. But I think we need to continue to come together as a society, raising awareness mm -hmm. and making sure that this doesn't happen for for I don't have kids but like for for our children and our children's yeah. children nice. because right now is the time where it's a make or break point within our society where we're either going to go one way or the other let's move forward and let's not go backwards or let's not stay neutral because yeah. I see the outcry that's going on from a social standpoint Fred mm -hmm. and it's like people are tired of us being stuck in neutral mm -hmm. or us going backwards that's that's the whole bottom line that's happening amongst all all of what's happened uh, transpired over the past several months. I understand why people are upset, and I myself am upset. We're tired of being stuck in neutral or going backwards. We need to move forward as a society and, and as a group and, and as minorities and stuff. We're not trying to say that you know one group is better than the other because that's not the truth. All we're saying is that can we all come under one roof? and be treated as equal we're not saying we want more benefits or whatever you know etc cetera, etc cetera. we're just stuck we're tired of being stuck in neutral no going backwards let's move forward and let's all get a fair shake that's all you can ask for in this world is an opportunity well said H have you have you experienced racism yeah I've, ex I've, actually, I've experienced racism when i lived a couple of like probably four or five years ago i was living in uh, Lincoln Park in Chicago, which is, you know, right outside of, of downtown. And I was driving around my car and I got pulled over by a police officer. And, and he goes, hey, he goes, you know, what are you doing in this neighborhood? I'm like, well, I, you know, I live, you know, a couple blocks down. He goes, you know, he, you know, he was, you know, Caucasian cop. Fine. You know, I was being very respectful. He goes, you don't look like you live around here. Wow. I was like, well, what does that mean? You know, and he was like, so he's like, Re license registration. So I showed it to him, whatever he goes. I'm like, and I literally told him, I go, officer, I go, with all due respect, I'm like, if you want me to go to my apartment, I have the lease in my in my place. You can walk me what? into my apartment. I'm just, I, I told him, but I'm like, if you want, like, I'm just, you know, I don't, when it comes to cops, I don't, you know, yeah, I way sure. too many. But he was like, you know, you don't live around here. You know, where do you live? And I told him, he goes, he goes, oh, he goes, well, I didn't even have a rolling stop. He just stopped me because I looked, quote unquote, suspicious. I wasn't even wearing a hoodie or nothing, Fred. I was wearing like a track jacket and uh, sweatpants and whatever. But for someone to say, you don't look like you live around here stuff. I mean, come on now. But I mean, you know, you have to, you know, I was cordial and nice. And, you know, and it's it's like what they said in um the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air when when Jazz went, you know, and he was at in the court and they go, you know, you can lower your hands. He goes, nope, I'm not going to lower my hands, you know. <laughs> And stuff like that. And that's the absolute truth. Like my father, who is a school teacher in Northwest Indiana, told me, if you ever get pulled over, hands on 10 and 2. That's and exactly two. what you do. Yeah, and, and everything that I do. And I'm not saying, look, I have friends of mine, dear friends, family members or police officers 
But I always ask a police officer whenever I get pulled over, and it hasn't happened often, thank God, knock on wood here, but I always ask them, can I reach for my wallet? My wallet is in my pocket. They say yes. I'm like, okay. And I tell them, I'm reaching for my ID in my wallet. Can I get my registration? I'm always asking before I do the action. And as I'm doing the action, I'm telling them what I'm doing because, I mean, I, I just don't want to be put in a bad position. Absolutely right. Amen to that. Andre got a question. Ray, thanks for coming on. And, and I appreciate you coming on too. Thank you, Ray. Oh, thank you for the invite. All the time. Ray, Ray, thanks for coming on. Oh, you read, you read, you yeah, like, yeah. What, what, let's see, what, what is boxing <laughs> hey. to do different, different impact in the American sports scene in 2021? Uh, I appreciate my bad friend. I got caught up a little bit. <laughs> no, because they'll tell you, I get tongue tied. I, <laughs> I think it's at 10 o'clock. I can read, I can read all of those before like 10 o'clock. After 10 o'clock, I just get tongue tied. And I'm like, <laughs> <"What is this?" laughs> oh man. What does boxing have to do to, to have a bigger impact on the American sports scene in 2021? I think the bigger crossover fights are going to happen. And Fred, I think we're very, we were very close to seeing that, mm. especially with the success of Wilder Fury 2. Yes. I worked that event. You were around it. And I saw mm. Wilder Fury. They, they, everyone worked well together on the PBC, TGB, top ring side. I think if we wouldn't have had COVID-19, we would have been – we would have maybe seen Spence Crawford or we would have been really close to it. So that's why I think the bigger fights, once fans come back, we're going to see crossover fights. But again, fans have to come back because promoters, it's hard for promoters to pay these guys what they're worth without having the revenue from the gate. I mean, right. some of the biggest, I mean, you, you're looking at Wilder Fury 2 did what, like $20 million or $15 lot of million? Dollars at the gate, that's a lot of money to divide up between both guys. We need to have fans back in the arenas. And what, what upsets me is that some of these MMA fans are like, well, if the UFC can do it. You know, how come boxing can? It's like, because UFC fighters are getting paid. A lot of them are getting paid peanuts. Mm. Like, they're getting paid nothing. There's one big dog in MMA right now, and that's the UFC. So they can dictate what the fighters get paid. And if fighters are willing to accept that, hey, God bless you. I'm not going to tell you how to earn your living, but mm. fans need to understand boxing is a little bit different. Fighters get paid a lot more. There are a lot more. There are more networks that are involved. It's not just one guy or one group calling the shots. You know, you have fighters on top rank side. You got fighters in Golden Boy side, on PBC mm. side. You got fighters in, you know, the UK with, with matchroom and stuff. So people need to temper their expectations. Those big fights are going to happen in 2021 when fans can come back. And I think it's only going to be better for the sport. Plus, Fred, we're around these guys. A lot of these guys, I, this is the healthiest I've seen boxing in a long time. Young, hungry champions who want to fight each other and want to prove that they're the baddest man on the planet. Facts. We got a call in, man. 